Well, hello, my horde. Um, as you can probably tell, I have moved. Uh, <laughs> moving actually turned out to be, like, so much more exhausting than I really thought this particular move was gonna be. Uh, so that sort of explains why we had that big old gap of content um, in April. But yeah, I'm here now. Um, I, I'm not... This is still a mess, um, but I have actually a whole specific studio room. Um, we have moved into a two-bedroom apartment um, with also like a very well, for an apartment, a spacious kitchen. Uh, we have a washer and dryer now, and a dishwasher. It's just lovely. Um, I, I like it here a lot more. Um, it's nice that we're able to afford something a little better than the tiny box of an apartment we were living in. Um, just especially since I can't seem to stop collecting crafts. I just start doing new ones all the time. Um, but I have I have this nice new desk. Uh, the desk that I used to be at is gone forever because uh, he hated that desk um, and it was falling apart. But I got specifically one of these desks with the shelves attached so that like all my uh, planner stuff is right up here, very accessible. It's great. Um, I still need to actually clear this area out because um, I need to figure out where some of this stuff is really going. But it's progress. There's uh, stuff down on these shelves too. It's nice. It's very nice. Um, perhaps uh, if slash once I get everything actually like in a in a good tidy spot. Uh, we'll we'll actually do like a little bit of a room tour, but right now It's a mess. It's a mess so <laughs> for today um, I thought what I would do today is Just a little product. Um, I picked up at Target uh, on Because I saw it and uh, I, you know FOMO um, <laughs> This is actually a labyrinth tarot deck um, and I have not this is still plastic wrapped I haven't opened this and I don't um, sometimes I see products uh, labyrinth products online because I you know have them like I have the movie labyrinth liked on Facebook and all of that stuff um, from you know ages and ages and ages ago so sometimes I see posts of merchandise also everyone in my life sends me links when they see posts about merchandise um, when the labyrinth board game was coming out no less than four people sent me that link. And none of them bought me that game. I still don't own the Labyrinth board game. So I'm just saying, if you're gonna send me a link to something, it better be with a receipt because uh, you sent it to me as a gift. I'm just kidding, I don't. <laughs> I, I love that people think about me. It's just funny because I'm like, you're the third person to tell me, thank you, I, thanks, it's so cool, yeah. <laughs> but um, anyway. I figured I'd just go ahead and like open this up and look at it on camera because it's still an unboxing but it's a little different than the blind box content which will always be around. <laughs> um, so we have our little tarot guide because this is it is based on like the actual tarot um, so you could use these for readings. Um, I don't see why they'd be any more or less valid than any other tarot deck, um, honestly. You know? <laughs> any mass-produced tarot deck, anyway. Um, the best tarot deck is, like, anything handmade-ish, you know, um, or, or, or small-made, um, that you can actually you know, guarantee was made ethically. Um, like, like runes. You're supposed to make your own runes. Um, like, they don't need to be gemstones. They don't even, like, need to be bone. You can, like, 
scratch your runes into acorns and that's actually because you made it that's actually more magical than runes you bought um <laughs> even if the runes you bought are nicer so you know that's but other than that like there's there's no reason these tarot cards are any worse than any other mass-produced tarot card for magical purposes so you can do readings with them um, so it does come with, and I would like to point out that this is actually, I, I think this is nice, this is gorgeous, I love it. I, it's got that, such that nice spine and like this nice thick cover going on that there is a part of me that doesn't ever want to open this because I know that eventually this spine will start to show like little uh, ridges and stuff from being opened. And I hate that. I love like a crisp paperback that doesn't have that going on. <laughs> I'm that person, I get a new book and I like read it like this. Like, I don't open it more than that because I just, I don't want the spine to <laughs> have those creases. Um, Cause you know, I'm crazy, but you really, you really would need to open it up. Um, but I'm gonna take a quick look in here. Oh, Forward by Brian Froud. That'll be interesting to read at some point. And so this again has artwork of, has the artwork that's on the cards in here. And then just the descriptions of what they mean um, in general, what they mean specifically upright, specifically reversed. Okay, so we don't super need to go through that. Um, in theory, unless there is some particular reason that this is different um, interpretations from a traditional tarot deck. You wouldn't necessarily need this specific guidebook, um, although, you know, the foreword by, by Froud himself is quite nice. I wonder... Okay. So... Author Minerva Siegel, um, who has also author, authored tarot decks for The Nightmare Before Christmas, uh, Supernatural, and the Tarot for Self Care. How to Use Tarot Manifest to Manifest Your Best Self is also a book she's written. Um, yeah. Oh, it's she's got an Instagram at Spooky Fat Babe is what that says. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, and also the illustrator is uh, Thomas Hijo. And we've got in here just a little blurb about him, but yeah, that's in there. So I was wondering, I was wondering um, if there were multiple artists on this, but it is just the one artist. And it looks like... It looks like there are, I don't know if these are traditional spreads, but there are some spreads suggested um, in, the, in the back here that uh, have at least been named and related back to Labyrinth. So this is, so it is, it is unique, but there isn't any reason why you couldn't also just do traditional tarot readings with it. Ugh, I always forget how many tarot cards there are. I have one other tarot deck. I have a Fairy Wicca tarot deck, um, which all of my books are in boxes right now, so it would be there. Um, so we do have Sarah. That's nice. Sarah as the Fool. I do, so I really, this artwork is good. Um, I don't know... I'm not like the biggest fan of the like super sketchy style, but I do really respect like this artwork is really good. Um, I like the backs of the cards. I like this artwork um, quite a bit. The like shield from the the two door guardians. Um, Jareth as the magician here. I'm just gonna leave these in this order for now. These are hefty. <laughs> I'm like the whole deck to my my fairy wicketero cards are a little bit smaller and less thick. Like the um 
this paper is thick. It's nice. Um, these are these are good cards. Um, but like my other deck, like kind of fits more comfortably into my hand, and this is like very very much not comfortable in my hand. <laughs> um, we've got. Oh, what did I just do? Okay. Uh, the High Priestess seems to be an original goblin character here. And Sarah's stepmother as the Empress. That appears... It doesn't, to me, look that much like, his, uh, like Sarah's father, but it is pretty clearly supposed to be Sarah's father as the Emperor. Oh, I'm gonna have to admit I don't know how to pronounce this. The Hierophant. That would be Hoggle there. Ooh, the Dancers! They're from the, the ballroom. Some particularly standout characters from that scene. The Chariot. Sir Didymus and Ambrosius there. Oh, strength is the humongous. That makes sense. Uh, these, these all like mostly make sense. Um, uh, the hermit here is the wise man in his hat. Uh, the wheel of fortune. I this is I like this. Um, so like even though I said I don't particularly care for the like sketchy style, I really like this particular card um, with her lipstick markings and the little hands of the little stone turners, I guess. I don't, I can't remember if they have a more specific name. Um, I'm losing my labyrinth trivia in my head, I guess. Um, hmm. Justice being the helping hands. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Um, Artwork is nice and creepy, though. Like, it's nice and scary. I feel like. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. If you if you look, they're kind of like making a whole person with like a weird face. Interesting. Oh, the hanged man is uh, Ludo hanging from the branch there. You know, <laughs> slightly less dark than the than the card actually implies. Um, ew. Fate is Jareth's beggar uh, disguise. Temperance is the two door knockers. Um, the demon being the fireys seems fitting uh, since they are. <laughs> pretty messed up. Um, the tower is the castle there. Makes plenty of sense. The star is Lancelot the teddy bear. <laughs> like I said, my only other deck is a fairy wicca tarot deck, which is um, not... I don't think it's 100% one-to-one, um, like a traditional tarot deck, uh, so there are, are some cards are not in it and some cards are different, um, so I'm not actually super familiar. And it's also been years since I've done any readings. Um, we have here the moon represented by the partially eaten peach with the worm coming out of it, um, and some crows hanging out, the sun being actually the sun and uh, creepily looming over Toby there. That's, uh, scary. Judgment being the door guardians there. And again, that art directly referencing, or, you know, directly referenced by the art on the back of the cards. The world is just a portion of the labyrinth there. And that makes plenty of sense. Uh, King of Poles. This is a character I definitely recognize. That guy's definitely in the background uh, in the film. 
the Queen of Poles. I don't think I've noticed this character. This may be an original design going on here. The Knight of Poles. I'm very familiar, our little mounted goblin guys. The Page of Poles. The guys with the little nippy sticks. Uh, Ace of Poles. Sort of unfamiliar territory there. Now I believe, so this is also, these are all numbers of poles. So that's the ace of poles. This would be the two, um, the three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Wow, and there is there is so much more of this to go. <laughs> All right. I'm going to just take a sip of water here. All right, continuing on. Um, I am not sure I understand uh, this one, but I guess you had to get the, the worm in there somewhere, and he is the king of junk. Though, obviously, the queen of junk is indeed the junk lady. The Knight of Junk uh, appears to just be some rocks taken out of dude. <laughs> the Page of Junk is what might be also sort of an original character. That's not necessarily imagery that I am recognizing. And then of course the Ace of Junk. Two. Oh, these all seem to be... Okay, the first two feature broken shields, so three, um, and then four, five, yeah, six. None of this seems to be particularly, to me, meaningful. Um, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, I think with this uh, series of things, the of junk, um, if more of that had featured Sarah's items that she identified as, you know, it's all junk, um, that might be a little bit more meaningful to the source material. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure that the artist found some meaning in these, um, especially, I didn't particularly read, but especially if they like drawing tarot cards is something they do more, more frequently than just this once. Um, but yeah, I, I would like to have seen like the, um, like the Ace of Junk could have been the music box. Maybe that's somewhere else in here, but like the music box and her little printing set and like the slippers and stuff if some of that had been slipped in there with also like random garbage um i think that could have been just you know it's it's the labyrinth tarot <laughs> if you if you really want to like hammer that home um so here we have the king of feathers uh Jareth in his owl form it even has the um mismatched eyes going on um or you know <laughs> as far as the story is concerned or as far as most of the fandom is concerned um we sort of ignore the fact that actually David Bowie's eyes were the same color and one was one pupil is just permanently dilated or was um and we go, no, he literally has two different colored eyes. He has heterochromia. Uh, so, so when I say that, um, that's, that's where that is. But, you know, obviously the reality is different. But that's, that's what the accepted canon is um, amongst, amongst the fandom, anyway. Um, the Queen of Feathers uh, being a fairy... Um, not quite like the fairy actually in the movie, uh, but I, I do like this design, the, um, the sort of like leafy wings. I'm into that. That's very cool. 
um, the Knight of Feathers being the goblin that piloted Humongous. The Page of Feathers, um, I do recognize this goblin, though I don't, I don't know what you would call him, but I do recognize that. Um, the Ace of Feathers, I don't know that I've seen that. That might be original, and I, he's kind of cute. <laughs> Little dragony goblin guy is super cute. And then two three, four, I gotta say, this card, these like greens, these sort of like green with a touch of like yellow and red feathers, I'm really liking the coloration on that. Like I, de I definitely respect this artist. This is, this is a good artist. I just like, I'm not necessarily a fan of the style in general. Five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. All right, and this is, I think this is the last set, yes. So the last set is Pots. Um, so this isn't a traditional care, like I was thinking, because um, those first several cards kind of were, but I think that um, the like suits of cards, these are, these are original, um, but they're probably comparable to, to what's in a tarot deck, but uh, I I didn't give this enough credit for being original, and I've just realized that I should say that because I don't think that pots and feathers and sticks or whatever um, are and junk are the traditional things. Um, I know that my the tarot deck I have, the other deck I have, um, the suits are um, like air, fire, water. Um, and I think that's a little more traditional, but I'm not sure because I, <laughs> I have one tarot deck. I'm not that into tarot cards. I have more runes than I have tarot cards. <laughs> um, I'm also not, <laughs> not bad as in like I do bad things. I'm bad at being a witch. I'm a bad witch. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, so we have the king of pots here. Um, Oh yeah. yeah, 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 I recognize this goblin. He's just got his head open. Um, but yeah, I think that's the little cannonball guy. No, it's not the cannonball guy, but one of those in that scene. Um, the Queen of Pots. I'm not sure I remember this particular goblin, but fits right in. Uh, the Knight of Pots is one of the cannon guys. Uh, the Page of Pots is the little cannonball guy. <laughs> there we go. Um, so that kind of makes sense, uh, relating those characters to a suit that you're calling Pots. Um, and then the Ace of Pots. Two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so <laughs> that's that's the whole deck. Um, I have clearly made it. I, I believe I've made it clear that I'm not qualified to like actually judge this as a tarot deck, and I would absolutely need to read through um, more of this book or you, any of it um, to have any idea about um, any actual applications or... Cause, uh, I know, like, the popular, popular, you know, vision... Sorry, what am I trying to think of? Just, like, the popular perception of tarot is that it's, like, supposed to be, like, super fortune telling and it is it is fortune telling um but tarot also has a use in meditation um and some tarot decks are specifically built around that idea um and like instead of being like okay this layout is specifically i want to predict my future it's like this layout is 
give me something that I should meditate on today, that I should think about. Um, so, and that's been my sort of um, experience with tarot. But like I said, not really qualified to judge any actual uses of this. Um, because I'm just so casual <laughs> about it um, and I haven't done a lot of research and also you do have to like really read and um, become familiar with this deck and how you relate to the deck and how to interpret it um, so I haven't I haven't read any of the introduction about you know what their goals might be on any sort of magical spectrum and but obviously as a novelty as you know a piece of fan work of fan art um this is it's very well done um other than like like i said with the junk i really would have liked to have seen the connection back to sarah um because you could you could really sort of go to that like growing up theme within your cards I think um and and that's like my one like complaint um I'm again I'm not like the most in love with this style just because it's not a style that super appeals to me even though obviously obviously I saw that that's what the style was um but there you know there's another part of me that just I like to have fandom merch, so I needed to have the Labyrinth Tarot deck, the official Labyrinth Tarot deck. Um, but I do also, I do appreciate the art. Like this is, this is not bad art. Um, just because I don't necessarily love it does not mean it's bad. <laughs> um, it's very good. I can tell that the artist, like, is very skilled. I just... There's also a part of me that um, this like sketchy style is kind of dark and I just would almost wish it was more of a dreamy art style, like a little lighter and airier and you know more towards the like fantasy and less towards because this makes me feel like you know woodblock um, stuff and like a little more medieval. Uh, and I'm just thinking of more modern fantasy, I think, uh, you know, 80s glitter metal, because <laughs> um, that's what I think of when I think about Labyrinth. Um, but overall, I'm really happy to own this. I think it is good. Um, and now that you've seen it, you can make a decision about whether you would actually want to own this for yourself as well. Um, and that's, that's the whole idea. Uh, of doing a video like this, in my opinion, like, just a, I mean, give like the briefest of my opinion about it, but also just, here it is, you can decide if you would want that. Um, <laughs> okay, so I do think I have belled on enough about that. So we are going to end the video here today. If you liked today's video, you can always tell me so by hitting that like button you know, <laughs> engage with the content. Um, and if you want to see when the next video comes out, there's subscribe and I guess the bell just because apparently I don't post every week. I try. I always want to. I just don't always post every week. Um, so the bell might actually be helpful <laughs> just to make sure that you get those notifications. Um, and with that, I will see you treasures next time. Bye.